the most effective way of training end users to improve SharePoint adoption. One of the most important steps to ensuring successful SharePoint adoption is training, but some training strategies are much more effective than others. Many companies are attaining greater results after deploying a system that provides instant, contextual, on-demand, bite-sized tutorials to the end users. In this short video, Curtis Hughes, CIO at Midrex Technologies, talks about the best way to train end users. To watch the complete one-hour course on five proven steps to improve SharePoint adoption, click the link below to go to visualsp.com. The last thing I want to talk about really hits home, and I know especially for, for Visual SP as well, is we've got to rethink how we're doing training. And I'm going to keep talking about this one until everybody gets it, but people are starting to slowly get it. I love what, 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 the, what the team at, at uh, Visual SP is doing and, and those guys. I mean, some of the things they've got coming out are amazing. Hopefully you guys, some of you will be at Ignite, uh, hopefully next week, see some pretty amazing things as well. But, you know, up to this point, you probably, maybe you've noticed that nothing I've talked about has been about training. Have you noticed that? I've been talking about people and roadblocks and those kind of things. But, but when we hear adoption, we almost always think we got to train people. That's how we get people to adopt it. We got to train it. And I'll, I'll tell you a secret here in a minute. But, but training is, is really, it's important, but it's not the most important thing. And so how many of you still like sitting in long all-day training courses and long training classes, right? This hour is probably killing you just being on this hour because you probably already checked your email five times or your text messages. I mean, we all multitask, right? And most of us probably look something like this, right? I mean, we're, we're running from meeting to meeting. We've got a thousand things going on. And, and, and we're just bombarded with information. This is what your typical user looks like. So how do you expect that user to sit through, you know, one or two day training course and actually retain anything? I don't, you know, even if you give them tip sheets, handouts, worksheets, whatever it may be, we're inundated with information. And in fact, Microsoft did a study last, last year that actually found out that all the use of technology and how much we multitask and switch gears and all this kind of things, it's actually lowered our attention span more than 25% over the last 10 years. So we now have an attention span of about eight seconds. So it, it, I mean, we're, we're not being able to focus on things as long, right? So, so we've got to understand that when people are using these tools, we need to give them quick ways to get access to this information. And so I want to show you guys a couple stats and, and see where you are with this. So the first one I'll show you is really around the education method. So this was this was a study that, that the Michael Sampson company did, and really it talked about the number one education method for SharePoint and, and, and intranets, right? Um, and many of you probably use this method. Pages on the intranet is kind of how it was how it was uh, categorized, but some sort of knowledge base, some sort of list of pages or wiki pages or whatever it is. On, on the on the site and when you have problems you go to it maybe it's even a link to you know Microsoft Office you know on the web or some other help sites or something like that but having some pages that people have to click through and go to and find out what they need to get to that was the number one the number one education method 65 percent of organizations said this is what they used now they went and then they asked the users well what's here, here's all the different ways that we've we've shown you what's the most effective way specific to the education method and this pages on the inter internet only 16% of employees actually said that pages on the internet was very helpful or extremely helpful. So you see the disconnect here, right? We're doing these things, we're putting all these links up there and we're throwing 300 links out there and expecting our users to go browse through those when they've got a thousand other things to do. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to sit through long classroom training. There, there's a time and a place for some of that. But for the most part, we're busy, we're doing more with less, and we've got to figure out how to give users information really quickly. So we've got to adapt our education methods and how we're training users to, to be able to adopt these technologies. So I, I came up with this, what I call prepare and proclaim. And you'll see that coming on your screen now. And I'll talk about, I'll talk about both sides of, of this for a second. So on the prepare side, I mean, you guys can read this, but not everyone's going to be an early adopter. You're going to have some people that, that want to adopt it, that are part of your pilot group, that want to be at the forefront of this, and I would grab those, and, and if you look on the Proclaim side, I would make those your ambassadors and your champions, the people that are early adopters and want to grab onto it. The big piece I want to talk about is this, this, this middle one and this, this second and third bullets on the Prepare side. We've got to change how we deliver content and training um, to, to this more just-in-time, bite-sized, contextual help. Uh, 
and that's really what Visual SP has really done a great job of. If you haven't seen their product, I'll show you a slide next of just one little one little bit, and and you'll see some new stuff next week if you're going to be at Ignite. But we use these things all the time, and it doesn't have to be Visual SP. But but just start thinking, how do we deliver? content in small chunks because when I'm on the intranet or I'm on SharePoint or your users are on SharePoint and I'm in a document library or I'm trying to figure out how to restore a version, the last thing I want is to figure out you know how to set permissions and and, and filtering and, and creating views and all these things. I don't want to have to weed through all that. All I need to know is how to restore a version. I should be able to find that within a couple seconds. Show me how to quickly get there, right? Whether it's you search, something like that. How do I get there because I need to move on? And if I don't, then you know, I'm going to get frustrated. I'm not going to use it, and I'm going to find some other way and some other system to use, right? So how do we deliver information so that we can, you know, tune it to this eight second attention span. It's sad, but it's true. And that and that's the new norm. And so we've got to make sure we're understanding those things. And I spent a lot of time understanding kind of how, how, how users are changing over the years and kind of the future of work type stuff. The last one there is, is we've got to start early and repeat regularly. And this is something we see, and to be honest, we actually did this a lot in the past. Um, and most organizations do this. They, they, get this big deployment, let's just say you've got this big SharePoint intranet deployment or, or however you're rolling out SharePoint. And maybe right before the big deployment, they get groups together and then they train everybody, right? You go through this training, uh, maybe you sit in a class, maybe you watch videos, whatever it is, but we train people, right? We have this training event. But then what happens when you hire 10 people next week or 100 people next year or 1,000 people over the next five years? How do those people get trained? What's your process? Are you just going to send them to these, these uh you know, 300 links on the on the web and say, hey, go view these videos. What's the process? How do you onboard new people? Maybe people coming from, you know, different roles into that same role. So starting early helps helps your users. You know, we actually start training and getting people used to the product and preparing them in, in parallel with actually building uh, the, the actual implementation, right? So that by the time we actually get to the deployment, they're really comfortable. We, we know who our ambassadors and our champions are, and we know what is going to work really well. And then we put a framework in place using the steering committee of monthly webinars, lunch and learns, whatever you want to call them, of how do we regularly find ways to, to send out something. Maybe it's a little newsletter that says, hey, have you seen these tips? It takes some work, but if you want this sticky uh, adoption, you've got to find a way to stay in front of your users and help them understand new ways of using the tools. you got to help them. Even if it's pulling a blog feed from something else, roll that in and send that out as part of your newsletter. Do something to stay in front of them and give them you know, regular updates and, and give them a way to kind of find that. And then on the Proclaim side, you've got to start spreading the news and building excitement. I mean, one of the things we do is we create campaigns a lot of time around why this is important. What is it going to mean? I mean, maybe it's a poster in the break room. We've done things like mouse, you know, a mouse pad that has this branded piece on it. We've done little postcards that end up on everybody's desk when they come in in the morning. All kinds of things we've done to get people excited about this new thing, the launch of our new internet or our new SharePoint site or, or whatever it's called. I mean, we've seen everything done. We talked about ambassadors and champions. And then the last thing I've already mentioned is helping users understand why, helping them cross that bridge and understand, hey, all this change, it's happening. This is why it's happening. It's not just here's how to do it, but but it's, but it's, it's important for you to understand why this is different for you. So this is kind of what the... Uh, what the visual SP piece looks like and it, and it might be a little jumpy but you can kind of see how it, how it goes around and adds this contextual help right so if I'm in these help pages I can see these little things in there that actually give me really quick context and I know it's going fast but you can see these little icons that actually show me hey how do I do that it pops a video in line how do I edit this page how do I upload a new document via drag and drop Whatever the case may be, I can click on these new things and it pops a video or a document. You can put your own help in here. It doesn't mean it all has to be Visual SPs. You can put your own help that you've developed right in line. And so it makes it really easy and really nice to be able to go through that. If you would like to automate training and support for your team, install Visual SP, the plug and play, instant, and context sensitive self help system for SharePoint and Office 365 end users. Over 2 million users and over 200 companies are using Visual SP to boost end-user adoption and reduce the burden on their IT support teams. Using Visual SP's step-by-step -step intuitive guidance tools, let your colleagues get access to help wherever and whenever they need it, facilitate employee onboarding with always accessible tip sheets, annotated screenshots, step-by-step -step walkthroughs, and screen capture videos. Accelerate user adoption of your business workflows and improve productivity. To request a free demo and see how Visual SP works, 
click the link below to go to visualsp.com.